Welcome to CAPS 13 News, I'm Tori Whalen. The 2024 State Farm Show is moving to Pitt State's campus. The previous location is a served the event for 36 years. The space did not have a facility for indoor booths. The show will move to the Plaster Center. There will be a more than 400 exhibit spaces plus an area for outdoor vendors. The show will take place May 29th through 31st. An upcoming workshop brings farmers, ranchers, and scientists together to help each other and the agriculture industry. A day in the life workshop uncovers the challenges farmers and ranchers face from sun up to sundown. Through this workshop, scientists will be able to gain valuable agribusiness insights that can be solved through advances in polymers. Farmers Accelerating Research and Materials, also known as the Farms, is led by the Kansas Polymer Research Center at Pittsburgh State University. The agenda includes an event reception with a keynote speaker, a full day of workshops, and a day of proposals, writing, and planning. This event will be held February 26th through the 28th at Block 22 in Pittsburgh. Incoming of Pittsburgh State students will have a chance to get help with their tuition costs. The Pittsburgh State Office of Admission created a new scholarship. The scholarship is open to all 2020 high school graduates in Crawford County. To be eligible, students need to admit to a Pitt State and be a full-time student. The scholarship award is for $500 or $1,000 per semester. The Director of Admission, Scott Donaldson, says the goal is to give local students an opportunity to be a part of Guerrilla Nation and reduce their college costs for their first year. While the award is currently only for one year, the university will look for ways to help students with the cost of higher education. PSU President Dr. Steve Scott announces plans for a new addition to the nursing program. There are plans for a new simulation hospital to be built next to McPherson Hall. The hospital will be approximately 5,000 square feet. It will include four hospital simulation labs, associated control rooms, a debriefing room, and a waiting area. Well, I think one of the main things that's going to help is that, you know, currently all we have is just like that one simulation room with some like kind of dated dummies and things, but now we're going to have four full simulation rooms, brand new stuff, you know, and I just think it's really going to help us like develop our skills and kind of get prepared to go out in the field and practice. This addition was made possible by the donations from private donors who started donating after they realized the school needed a simulation hospital. A total of $6 million was donated to help move the project forward. Coming up, the PSU Theater Department prepares for a different kind of production. That's next when CAPS 13 returns. Why should people go fishing? Fishing is one of the greatest gifts that we have ever received from Mother Nature. This is one of the many chances we have to reconnect ourselves to the natural world. Mother Nature has given us a great opportunity to learn about the many things about fishing that will never be forgotten. If we introduce a relative to the wonders of fishing, we will always cherish the memories that we make when we catch a fish with them. campus police to that list. 911 is the quickest way to reach emergency services, but as a Pitt State student, you are advised to include a Pitt State police in your mobile phone. The Pitt State police number is for those times that you may have questions that may not be an emergency, such as a parking ticket. You remember if you're ever, ever in a situation where you're the caller, where you've noticed something, someone's in a, having a medical emergency, or you know some sort of a you know, maybe an accident or something. Any reason to call 911 like that? First and foremost, it sounds easy now, and it it sounds you know like it's pretty simple. But make sure you're you're calm, um, that you can provide a clear and accurate location where you're at. 
always provide your callback number where you're calling from because a lot of times you may not be the only caller that the 911 dispatcher is receiving the call from. You can reach the, Pits, Pits, the student police 24-7 at 620-235-4624. During the last week of February, the theater production Silent Sky starts performing for the public. They are still in rehearsals, but they are just about ready to get started. I had a chance to talk to the director and a cast member and learn more about the play. Silent Sky is a theater production about the life of female astronomer Henrietta Lovett and her contribution to the scientific community. She was one of the first um, women to work at Harvard Observatory in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And she and her female colleagues were called computers because what they did is they mapped the stars mm -hmm. And based on their mapping of the stars, they figured out the distance from Earth to a lot of the stars. Katherine Huffman plays the role of Margaret Lovett, Henrietta's older sister. She is a fictional character in this story, but represents Henrietta's family. Huffman says Silent Sky is a very different production. I would say what makes this show unique is that it has such a small cast. There's only five cast members and only one male. Um, and three of the characters are based on real life people. So it's actually bringing history to life in that way. Okay. These women are, are sometimes not credited for their discoveries and their contributions to what we know about the universe and the cosmos and that we're only a really small speck on this great planet in this, in this universe. And, but we have a chance to be able to make bigger contributions and we should find those ways to make those bigger contributions. Performances run from February 27th through the 29th at 7.30 p.m. and February 29th through March 1st at 2 o'clock p.m. The play will be at the Bicknell Family Center of the Arts in the Miller Theater. The PSU Wind Ensemble has a concert coming up tonight, but that is not the only thing that they have planned in the upcoming months. The PSU Wind Ensemble is having a concert tonight from 7.30 to 8.30 at the Big Knoll Family Center for the Arts at the, performing at the Performance Hall. This event is free and open to the public. And since the spring semester is the busiest time of the year for the music department, there are several other concerts planned over the next few months. Other than, you know, this is our, this is our busy time of the year, there seems like there's a performance coming up every week. and. Uh... You know, I guess uh, this is, we're just looking for the students to kind of just hang in there and, and uh, continue to uh, do, do well like, like we, they always do. Um, yeah, just make it to the end. <laughs> you can learn more about the music department and those events at www.pittstate.edu slash music. Coming up, it was a big night for one player on the PSU women's basketball team. That's next when Caps 13 returns. Saturday, the Pitt State women's basketball team faced the Northwest Missouri State Bearcats at John Lance Arena. Pitt State was without their main point guard and trailed early in the first quarter 10-8, but never trailed again after that. With a basket late in the second quarter, Athena Alvarado became the la la latest gorilla to record 1,000 career points. Pitt State continued to lead Northwest Missouri into halftime 34-22. With just 13 seconds left of the game, Aaron Davis puts up big free throws for the Gorillas to lead by six. Tristan Gegg scored a high 24 points to lead the team. Alvarado reached a pair of milestones in the game with exactly 1,000 points and 555 rebounds. PSU beat the Bearcats 60-54. to um, It was just really big. I'm happy it happened at home. Uh, 
I've been talking to my teammates about that this week. Uh, just great day to be a gorilla. <laughs> we prepared hard this week and they just hit on a run, but like she said, we hit our free throws. Aaron stepped up, huge free throws at the end for her. Super proud of her for that. And we just prepared and finished. I mean, uh, definitely for our fans. We have such a great fan base here and um, it just feels good to win for them. Pittsburgh State men's basketball team also took on the number one rigged Northwest Missouri Bearcats last Saturday. The Gorillas have fell behind early in the game, ending the first half with the Bearcats leading 49 to 23. Junior Grant Harding, redshirt freshman Ethan Holloway, and freshman Jalen Justice also all subbed in for some playing time. Jacoby Womack paced Pitt State with 16 points, while his brother, Xavier Womack, added 14 points and 9 rebounds. A.J. Walker also finished in double figures with 10 points. Northwest Missouri State University gains a big 90-65 win over the Gorillas. The women and men's basketball teams will play each other again Saturday, February 22nd, but this time it will be at the Bearcats' home court. You can find those highlights here next week. We'll be right back. Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for coming to help me study for this test. It's going to be a real tough one here, I can guarantee it. So. Guys, I'm kind of hungry, and it is Tuesday. Couldn't we get some tacos? Tacos? I hate Mexican food. Why don't we try something a little less bold? Like subs. Subs? That's literally the worst idea you've ever thought of. Have you ever thought about pizza, maybe? How about something better than that? Pizza is going to take like half an hour. Are you kidding me? Obviously, we all know that barbecue is the move. Guys? Hey, guys? 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 Let's check out Gorilla Crossing. I mean, Gorilla Crossing has hand wrapped burritos and hot and ready pizzas and pastas, custom crafted subs, and savory Kansas City barbecue. Wait, where'd everybody go? Head on over to Gorilla Crossing for a variety of food options at student friendly prices. And download the Gorilla Dining app for daily specials. Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn stars Margot Robbie as the title character, and after splitting with the Joker, Harley joins forces with superheroes Black Canary, Huntress, and Renee Montoya to save a young girl from the evil crime lord known as Black Mask. Welcome to Cap's 13 Reviews. I'm your host, Nate Vanderpool, and I had the chance to see this movie last weekend, and it was... fine? By no means was it a perfect movie, but I would say that I enjoyed enough of it, so Let's just talk about the good and what worked for the movie. Best part about this movie is Margot Robbie is Harley Quinn without a doubt. You have certain actors who play a character like Robert Downey Jr. He is Iron Man and Ryan Reynolds is Deadpool. Margot Robbie is Harley Quinn and she's by far and away the best part of the movie. And if anybody else were to play this character, I honestly don't know if the movie would work as well. And the acting across the board is honestly pretty good. Mary Elizabeth Winstead as Huntress and Journey Smollett-Bell as Black Canary are by far the standout for the supporting characters, but they're hardly in this movie and I kind of wish I would have been able to see more of their characters because I thoroughly enjoyed whenever I saw them on screen. But another thing I really appreciated was Kathy Ann's direction. This is a very bright and colorful movie and it's in your face, but it's done in a good way. And the main thing I liked about the movie was the action scenes. They are the standout moments of the movie and there's two that take place. One with a beanbag grenade launcher, which is pretty cool, and a baseball bat. And the choreography and everything is just, it's really well done. And I appreciated just how well the fight scenes were in this movie, because if they weren't as well as they were, this movie probably would have been a bit of a drag, honestly. All right, now let's talk about the flaws of the movie, because there are a few. The screenplay and the structure of events, it's just, it's not good. Uh, I'll say that. This movie is paced pretty poorly, and the beginning is very lackluster and it's honestly pretty tough to sit through. Within 30 minutes of the movie, nothing really exciting happens. And after that, like the movie starts to pick up, but it just jumps around a lot and it's not told in a very linear way in a way that's just all that exciting. Like it's honestly kind of hard to follow at points. But the main issue I had with this movie, I think is the villain, which is Black Mass. Like Ewan McGregor, he does a pretty good job playing this character, but he's a very generic and cartoonish character. He's over the top. He's loud and he's angry and he just doesn't have any motivation besides he just wants to kill Harley Quinn. It just, it didn't work for me. Like I wanted more from his character because even McGregor does a pretty fine job. It may seem like I disliked this movie, but I did enjoy it. 
This movie definitely has its flaws, and it probably has more flaws than strengths, but it's still a pretty good time and overall just a fun comic book movie. I liked it. I like this movie to a point. I don't know if I'll ever see this again, and I'm glad I did though. If I had to recommend this movie to you at home, I would definitely tell you to wait and stream it at the comfort of your home overseeing it in theaters because I just wouldn't waste your money on a ticket. But that takes up our time here at Caps 13 Reviews. Next week I'll be reviewing the Sonic the Hedgehog movie starring James Marsden and Jim Camry. Until then, I'm Nate Vanderpool and this has been Caps 13 Reviews. Have a great night.